Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a topic that I get questions about all the time on my channel, which is what books should you read if you're interested in mechatronics? So that's the question I'm gonna be answering today and I'm gonna give you my top five book recommendations as well as other topic recommendations that I think you should look into. If you read all of these books and you do a little bit of additional learning on the side, you could become really good at understanding the field of mechatronics. There are definitely things that cannot be learned from just reading books and you have to go out and find other sources of information and I'll talk about those as well. So without further ado, let's get into the books. So first, I want to talk about more of a category of books, and that would be data structures and algorithms. I think that every mechatronics engineer should have a solid foundation in data structures and algorithms. This is one of the harder topics that software engineers and computer science students often master when they try to get jobs. But it's not only important for them, I think it's important for any kind of engineer with any kind of relation to software to understand these fundamental concepts. By diving into data structures and algorithms, you learn about the most efficient ways to run a program and this can really help save you time and money. There are tons of books on this topic that have been written in many different programming languages. I would recommend a book in either C, C++, Java, or Python. Python does continue to become more popular every single year, but it is also a less common language used when dealing with data structures and algorithms because it's a little harder to see what's happening under the hood of the Python programming language. A lot of the books that are out there, however, are written in C or C++ as well as Java, and I have actually personally used C in programming, robotics, microcontrollers, and other things in my studies, so I would highly recommend a book or a course that teaches you data structures and algorithms in C or C++. So with that being said, the book that I'm gonna recommend here is called The Algorithm Design Manual by Steve S. Skeena. The code in this book is written in C and it's not too difficult to follow. I'm also gonna leave a link in the description to a source with other types of books written in other programming languages and I'm gonna leave a second link in the description which talks about how to best go about learning data structures and algorithms from a computer science perspective. Somebody wrote an amazing article on Leet Code that explains step-by-step -step what you should learn, what you need to know, where you can learn it on data structures and algorithms, pretty much all using free resources online. So I would highly recommend taking a look at that post on Leet Code. It was super helpful for me and I've actually been recently streaming on Twitch trying to learn this stuff myself. So if you're interested in checking that out and you wanna hang out with me while I try to get a job at a tech company, then go check out my Twitch link in the description. Books are a very good place to start, but I should warn you that in data structures and algorithms, they already assume that you know how to code in the particular language that you're using or that you at least have some of the basics down. But C language is a little bit more complicated because you have the coding language and the compiler and they both kind of work together in order to actually make your code run. Now I kind of mentioned this during my discussion and I'm gonna mention it again, but I think every single software engineer, even a mechatronics engineer, should try some questions on leak code. This is an amazing place to test out if you've actually learned anything and to apply the skills that you will need. And it's a great place to go if you wanna get a job in the software industry. So once you've done all of those things, you will be well on your way to knowing and understanding the topics of data structures and algorithms. And let's move on to part two. So the second topic that I think mechatronics engineers should venture to learn is things involving logic gates and electrical circuits. There are multiple ways to learn about these things. I have personally done a couple classes on this during my degree. And in all the classes I've taken, we have used textbooks that are more like physics oriented, and they kind of show you how to deal with electronic circuits, logic gates, and computer logic in a more kind of physics oriented manner. And they are all very good textbooks. So if you need some recommendations, I'm gonna put some links in the description for those textbooks and you can try and take a look at those for logic and electrical circuits. Now, why is this topic important? Well, it's important because understanding the kind of bare bones of how a logic gate works is pretty much essential for any kind of robotics programming that you're going to be doing 
because when you do some types of robotics programming, you really get to like the lowest possible level and you're dealing with microcontrollers, you're dealing with processors, you're dealing with different kinds of memory storage. And to understand how these things work, you have to understand how logic gates and electrical circuits work and how they work together. And you're also gonna be learning things like state machines and a bunch of other kind of useful, interesting topics that deal with computers. So understanding these topics will really help you when it comes to robotics programming. Now there are tons of YouTube channels that deal with this topic in depth as well. So if you ever have any questions, I would highly recommend searching up YouTube, what it is that you want to know. And in my experience, the people teaching electronics on YouTube do an amazing job of explaining it. Now third and somewhat related to the second point is signals and systems and control systems. Signals and systems deals with how a signal travels from basically destination A to destination B, how you can modify a signal, so how you can take a signal from real life, like my voice into this microphone, convert it from analog, which is my voice, to digital, which is electronic, and how it can be processed in post, different kinds of filters you can use, and a bunch of other things that deal with electronical and analog signal processing. This kind of stuff is insanely important if you're gonna be working with computers because it deals with topics like interference on cable lines, how to communicate between devices, and a bunch of other similar topics, and as well as network communications, which are things that maybe you hadn't thought of before, but there are so many different kinds of signals and systems when you're dealing with electronics and things that you have to consider, like the impedance and the admittance and the resistance, and all of these different things like cable length can really make or break a system. So this topic is extremely important. And again, I'm gonna link a couple textbooks down in the description so that you guys can learn a little bit about signals and systems. Now, what about control systems? Well, control systems in my view are also extremely important, especially again with robotics because any kind of input into a system, like say an electronic signal, and you want it to output into a motor to drive the wheels of a robot, for example, then you have to know how to get from that stage to the output stage and how the signal is processed in between those two stages. So that's kind of what control systems deals with. Control systems also deals with things like autonomous driving or even cruise control on a highway, for example. Sometimes you will have random things happening in the outside world and you have to somehow take a signal from the outside world, take an input on top of your previously defined input. Let's say I wanna go 100 kilometers an hour and there's wind going this way at 10 kilometers an hour. How does the computer deal with that 10 kilometer per hour wind so that the car at the end of the day ends up going 100 kilometers per hour? And the answer is, well, you use a control system and you use different methods to manage and figure out how these things work. So again, I'm gonna link more textbooks down in the description, and I highly recommend checking this stuff out on YouTube as well. Now this fourth one might be a little bit more controversial for some other mechatronics engineers out there, but I still think it's quite important and it has to deal with mechanical engineering design processes and materials and things like AutoCAD and three-dimensional design. Now the reason that I think this is super important for mechatronics engineer and robotics engineers is because a lot of the time in certain roles when you're dealing with robots, you are going to have to understand how to 3D design, how to prototype, how to physically prototype, how to 3D print, how to um, measure things properly, how to estimate things properly, even how to draw properly to come up with a good design. So these types of things are all traditionally mechanical engineering related, but I still think that they have a lot of application in the robotics world today. So I really do think that this is something mechatronics engineers or people aspiring to learn about mechatronics should understand how to do. This fundamental mechanical engineering knowledge is another very important part of a mechatronics engineer's background information. And I really think that it is important that you understand how these things work. 
The final topic and what I think is something fundamental to a mechatronic engineer's understanding of engineering is embedded systems engineering. This deals with things like microcontrollers and microcomputers like this Raspberry Pi here and how they interface with the real world. This brings together all of the previous knowledge that I've just talked about and puts it into a kind of nice package. So how do you get to the absolute bare bones of a micro device and tell it to do what you want it to do? And how do you make that efficient? How do you make it run well? And how do you make it work the way you want it to? That is exactly what embedded systems engineering deals with. Within this topic, you learn about things like digital and analog inputs and outputs, timers, interrupts, comparators, EEPROM, SPI, I2C, UART, pulse width modulation, etc. A lot of these things that I mentioned are communication protocols. One of these is programmable read-only memory. And a lot of this stuff you might learn in some software course, but in the embedded systems course, you learn how to actually apply code to create something out of you know what a manufacturer has made so a micro device and you create code to make the micro device do what you want it to do this kind of work is extremely rewarding when you actually get things to work because you know there's a lot of documentation and pages that come along with these micro devices trust me i have read probably thousands of pages of documentation to get micro devices working and it is a lot of work but when you are successful it is extremely rewarding i'll see if i still have some clips and i'll throw them up here to show you the types of things that i did with micro devices in embedded systems so that you can get an idea of what that's like for this topic, however, there aren't too many textbooks that I can recommend because each microcontroller that you work with is going to have multiple data sheets that are hundreds of pages long. So instead, what I would recommend is choosing a type of microcontroller, preferably one that's a little bit more popular, and then going onto YouTube and finding a tutorial, for example, one like this. This one goes into depth on the TI Stellaris and Tiva C boards. And Tutorials like this one will tell you basically exactly how these things work. There are many microcontrollers that do not have any tutorials and you are only left with the documentation that your manufacturers have provided for you. And once you get good at learning about these things, you will also get better at reading this documentation and understanding that, okay, this is the EEPROM, this is the memory, this is like a bunch of other things in the microcontroller. It's been a little while since I've done it myself personally, but when I did do it, it was a lot of information just packed into your brain. So, you know, make sure that you understand what's going on and having a YouTube tutorial would make it a lot easier <laughs> because when I was doing it, there were really no resources. Google could not, literally could not help me. I was stuck reading manuals. So doing something like that and figuring out and making it work is amazing. And this is another place where your understanding of the C programming language would come in handy since the majority of microcontrollers are coded in C. I think I should also mention that I recommend actually physically purchasing the device that you are going to be practicing on because just watching it is completely different from trying to do it yourself. Now there is an upfront cost to this, it is not free. However, the amount of experience and the knowledge that you will gain from it, and if you create something really cool at the end that you can showcase online, I think that is a worthy investment to make, and I highly recommend that you do that. There are some companies that sell these kind of learning kits online that would give you everything you need to get started, and there are also some countries that libraries actually have these types of kits that you can borrow and learn from. But at the end of the day, it is likely that you are going to have to buy something to follow along, and I think, as I said, it is a worthy investment. You know, sometimes learning does cost a little bit of money, but think of it as kind of an investment in yourself and your future and your learning, and it is nowhere near as expensive as a university education. If you supplement this kind of thing with the help of YouTube, a lot of your education can still be completely free. So that about does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, leave a comment down below telling me what you think. Tell me if this sounds scary. Tell me if I was helpful, if I did a good job explaining these things. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.